Beneath the frozen deserts of Mars, something is moving. Not wind, not dust, not the echoes of a meteor crash. Something deeper, a faint rhythmic pulse, like the planet itself, breathing. NASA's InSight lander once listened to the red planet for over four years, its ultra-sensitive seismometer pressed against the Martian soil. It recorded hundreds of Mars quakes, but toward the end of its mission, something strange emerged. Tremors unlike any the team had ever seen. Long, sustained, repeating, and eerily consistent. The signals didn't match meteor impacts. They weren't linked to windstorms or solar interference. They came from within, deep within. Scientists began calling it the silent storm, a whisper from a supposedly dead world. So what is Mars hiding under its crust? A sleeping volcano? a molten core, or something we've never encountered before? Stay with us, because what NASA's sensors heard may change everything we thought we knew about the red planet. For decades, Mars has been humanity's mirror in the cosmos, close enough to dream of, cold enough to fear, and yet no planet beyond Earth has been studied more intensely. NASA, ESA, and China have turned it into the most instrumented world in our solar system. Orbiters scan every ridge, rover wheels carve dusty trails, and seismic sensors listen to the heartbeat of stone. But then came a revelation buried in InSight's data archives. Low-frequency vibrations, too deep, too regular to be random. They weren't like the familiar quakes caused by meteor strikes. They weren't surface tremors. They came from far below, from somewhere near the Cerberus Fosse region a vast scar stretching thousands of kilometers across Mars. It wasn't supposed to exist. Mars, by every geological model, should be cold and dead by now. Its core frozen, its mantle solidified billions of years ago. And yet these signals hinted at something far more profound, that Mars may still be alive. If true, it rewrites everything, not just how we see Mars, but how we understand the life cycles of planets themselves. Because maybe death in the cosmos isn't as final as we thought. The story begins with InSight, NASA's stationary lander that touched down in Elysium Planitia in 2018. Its purpose was simple, to listen. Equipped with the SEIS instrument, InSight captured faint rumbles, small tremors, and meteor impacts. The first ever detected on another planet. But buried in its final transmissions before the mission's batteries faded in 2022 were seismic waves unlike any before. They didn't fade quickly. They resonated. Some lasted up to 40 minutes, as if the planet was humming. At first, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory suspected interference. But cross-referencing data with ETH Zurich's Marsquake service revealed something remarkable. All of these deep pulses came from the same location, Cerberus Fosse a fissure network so large it can be seen from orbit, carved by ancient lava flows, and now, perhaps, trembling once again. That could only mean one thing, something beneath the surface was still hot. Researchers began using thermal modeling to estimate the heat flow. Their conclusion shocked even the mission scientists. Mars's mantle might not be fully solid after all. There could still be molten pockets, trapped like glowing embers 50 kilometers below, they called it the Silent Storm, an invisible rumble of heat, tension, and movement trapped under centuries of dust. Its low-frequency S waves were unlike anything ever seen outside Earth, soft, wide, and continuous. On Earth, such patterns are linked to magma movement before volcanic eruptions. If confirmed, it would mean Mars is not extinct, just dormant, a planet in twilight, not death. And this changes everything. If there's still residual heat, then there might still be underground water, warmed by geothermal activity. That means possible habitats for microbial life, shielded from radiation, frozen deserts above, liquid pockets below. For the first time, NASA wasn't just asking if life once existed on Mars. They were wondering, could it still exist now? But not everyone agreed. As the data spread across research centers, skepticism grew. Some scientists argued the signals were simply atmospheric coupling, vibrations caused by the wind interacting with the lander's solar panels. 
Others blamed instrument fatigue. After years in Mars's harsh environment, InSight's sensors may have started to resonate internally. NASA itself remained cautious. Budgets were shifting toward Artemis and the upcoming moon missions. InSight's funding was cut, power levels dropped, and the lander fell silent. But just before its final transmission, a single data packet arrived. One stronger pulse, larger and deeper than any before. It didn't match wind patterns. It didn't match solar storms. It came from underground. The last whisper before InSight's dust-covered panels went dark. NASA confirmed the reading, but the analysis remains classified in ongoing studies. Meanwhile, China's Zhurong rover and its planned Tianwen-3 sample return mission have taken a keen interest in the same region. Because if Cerberus Fosse really hides an active magma pocket, then Mars's story isn't finished. It's only paused. So where do we go from here? NASA's Veritas mission, though focused on Venus, carries instruments capable of detecting similar thermal anomalies, potentially useful for Mars. ESA's ExoMars rover, Rosalind Franklin, set to launch later this decade, will drill two meters deep, searching for preserved biosignatures and heat differentials in the soil. And China's Tianwen-3 is already mapping candidate zones for future landers to test subsurface activity directly. But the most promising technology may not come from the surface at all. Scientists are developing orbital seismology, using laser interferometers aboard satellites to measure ground oscillations with nanometer precision, effectively listening to Mars from space. Why does this matter? Because if Mars is still geologically alive, it affects everything, from future colonies to long-term habitability. A living planet moves, it vents gas, it shifts terrain. If humans ever settle there, they'll need quake-resistant habitats and geothermal systems to harness or withstand the energy beneath. And then comes the big question, what if we could use it? Mars's inner heat could power future bases. It could melt ice for water, provide warmth for crops, and fuel for life. But energy that strong is rarely tame. A single shift in pressure could rupture frozen chambers of gas releasing clouds of CO2 or methane, potentially creating a planet-wide storm of dust and chaos. Every discovery opens a new door, but not all doors should be opened too quickly. And yet, curiosity will always win, because that's what drives us, to wake sleeping worlds and to find meaning in their silence. As the red horizon fades into the blackness of space, the question remains. Is Mars truly asleep, or is it simply dreaming of fire? The tremors beneath its crust may be weak, but they are persistent. Echoes of a heartbeat too faint for human ears, yet loud enough for our machines to feel. A century from now, humans may walk those plains again. They may stand above Cerberus Fosse and feel the ground hum beneath their boots. And perhaps they'll realize that planets never really die. They just grow quiet until someone listens because silence is never empty. Sometimes it's a planet whispering, I'm still here.